everyone, welcome back to this channel of crafting, crochet and knitting. My name is Nikki, how are you guys doing? As always, let me know by leaving a comment down below. You know that I like to hear what you're getting up to. <laughs> so today's video is going to be a little bit different because it's going to be another tutorial. Um, I finally decided that I was going to embrace my science side in uh, knitting and crochet. So. Um, I've done a tutorial before where I actually tried to explain how the pattern is made up and, and how you can then edit that pattern so that you can make it to your own taste. Um, and basically, that's just who I am. I hear a lot of podcasters talking about the creative side and the creative juices when they're designing, but some of them have also admitted there's a lot of maths in there. And I am, I am creative. <laughs> But I think the thing that actually really gets me about crochet and knitting is that mathematics, is that pattern making, why something works up the way it does. And don't get me wrong, I haven't branched out into pattern design yet, but I do tweak things um, and I do try to make my own little patterns for stuff that no one's made a pattern for or it's stuck behind a paywall and I just think actually I'd prefer learning how to do that myself. So yes, yeah, sorry for designers out there. I appreciate that you need to make income off of your designs, but I also am enjoying this as part of the pattern and the maths and the science of crochet and knitting. So sorry. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's a bit of a ramble, a bit of an insight into my crocheting and my knitting, um, and a bit of an explanation to why you're going to start seeing a few more sciencey videos <laughs> on this podcast. Um, so I'm going to go back to some yarn that I got last year um, that when I saw it I instantly thought that's going to be a chemistry set. <laughs> um, so I'm not a chemist, I'm an astrophysicist so there will also be more stars and planets appearing on this channel more frequently. I have tried to make some of those before in the past but I've never been totally happy with them so I'm going to remake them and when I'm happy with them I'll show you them. But for now, we're working on a chemistry set. And before you decide that you hate science and you run for the hills, the purpose of this chemistry set is shapes. Okay, so if you want to know how to make aragurumi shapes so that you can design your own things, then maybe stick around for this video because I try at different points to explain the, the logic and the pattern making behind what I'm doing. Um, fair warning, I'm making this pattern up as I go <laughs> in the video. So there's a few times where I might stop and maybe I've repeated myself because actually I've forgotten I already said something um, and I've just started at a different point because what I've done is I've tried something, it's not worked, I've frogged it back and I've just continued the video from there. I literally made this pattern up as, <laughs> as I went. Um, but I did that because I know how shapes work up and if, so again, if that's what you're interested in, it's worth sticking around to watch this video. So in today's video, I specifically am going to be working on a conical flask in, in chemistry. And in future videos, I will do some other bits and pieces as well that involve different shapes. But today's is a conical flask. So yeah, uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so my yarn for today has come from a kit that I got from Aldi about a year ago. It is 100% cotton. Uh, Aragurumi 25 gram balls of yarn in these colours here. I'm going to use the blue because I'm going to make my conical flask with water in first. I'm then going to switch to the white for the actual glass where there's no water. And I really like this icy colour which might work nicely as a bit of a glare on the glass. And I'll see about that later on in the tutorial. For now let's just worry about actually making the conical flask. Um, so we have got the yarn, it's not the softest cotton in the world and it's a little slitty so I might have a little bit of trouble with it in the video but that's fine, I'm going to probably show you how to get started on a round and then cut to the next round so you can pause the video at those points uh, in order to finish your own round at your own pace. I'm using a 3mm hook and I've deliberately gone for one of my three millimeter hooks that has this ergonomic handle because by the time you get down to about three millimeters, you start to put a little bit more strain on your hands and your wrists when you're crocheting. I have got my darning needle, 
which I might need at some point, and attached to that so I don't lose it is a little stitch marker. I don't need the stitch marker when we get started, I'm going to introduce it a little bit later on. So let's begin. Uh, just move some of this yarn out of the way. Okay, so we're going to start with a magic loop. Uh, there are people that will show you how to do this in tutorials uh, if you've not come across it before, but pretty much I just hold my yarn on my third and second finger, uh, lying flat like so. Then I wrap it around my first and second fingers, bring it back round and wrap it over again to make a cross, and then tuck that out of the way. And then get my hook, you go underneath that first crossover and over the top of the second crossover. You pull the yarn, sorry about the noise, the post just arrived. <laughs> you pull the yarn underneath the first crossover. Now that's beginning to resemble a knot but it's not entirely secure yet. We're going to grab the yarn again and pull it through the loop we've just created a little bit like a chain stitch. And now that's secure so we can slip it off our fingers. We have our loop. We want to make sure that we keep this thread wound the way that it was positioned when we did our crossovers so we don't want to lose that or pull it back through just want to keep it there and we're going to work into the loop over the top of both those strands we're going to do six single crochet in us terms or six double crochet in uk terms so that's where we're going to go into the loop pull through the yarn yarn over and pull through both stitches. So that's my first one, my second one, my third one, and I'm working over both those strands, so both the loop and that little tail end, working through both those. So four, five, and six. So now I've got my six single crochet. I'm going to hold the stitches and just pull on this tail end. Now some people prefer not to pull on the tail end until they've done the first stitch of the next round. I find it doesn't make too much of a difference for me, um, so do what you feel comfortable with. Um, but we're gonna, I'm gonna pull mine nice and tight so that I've got my circle beginning to form. So in order to make the base of this conical flask, we first need to make a circle. And the standard way to make a circle in crochet is to start with these six stitches and in every row we're going to increase evenly by um, six stitches. So that means that for the second round we're going to increase in every stitch which will take us from six single crochets to 12. So you might want to count back from the yarn on your hook in order to find where that original stitch is. So two, four, Five, and that's my sixth one. I'm going to go into it. Okay, I think that didn't go. No, it did. Okay, so this is an example of me worrying about splitting my yarn. <laughs> We're going to pull up our first. Oh, wait, no, I did split it. <laughs> Got to be quite careful with that first one. Okay, there we go. Pull up our first stitch. Go back into it and pull up a second. That first stitch is a little bit tricky because it's so close to where we closed up our magic loop. So the rest should be easier. So that's my first increase, so I've got two stitches. So then I can do three and four into the next. And then I can do five and six into the next. Six and seven. Not six and seven, sorry, seven and eight. Nine and ten in this one. And then eleven and twelve in the last. So that's how you would do round two of a circle. So we now have twelve stitches. Again, we're going to increase by six in the next round. This takes us up to eighteen. But in order to do this evenly now, we're going to first crochet a single stitch into the first stitch in our round, and then we're going to increase in the second. So we're going to follow that pattern of crochet one, increase one, all the way around so that we have 18 stitches. 
So crochet one, increase. And we just increase by literally doing two crochets into the same stitch. So that's three. Four is my next single. Five and six is my next increase. So go ahead and pause the video and work at your own leisure. Okay, so I'm on my last set of the pattern. So single crochet is 16th stitch and my increase is the 17th and the 18th. And I'm just going to double check, go around. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, perfect. Okay, uh, I just realized that I've actually left my tail. Um, that doesn't matter, I'll just weave that in at the end. Um, I would recommend, uh, if you remember, to actually work your tail into the third round. I don't go for the second because it's quite difficult to get those increases on the second round into your initial stitches that you did into your magic loop. Um, so I would have ordinarily worked this into the last round that I did, but as I forgot, I'll just uh, darn that uh, in a little while. For now, I'm going to work the fourth round. So at this point, you might begin to notice that your circle is looking like it has edges. It's beginning to look actually like a hexagon because we're working in increasing sixes. Um, so I've actually got a side sort of forming here and here and over here. I'm not going to worry about that for this um, for this next round, but in the round after that, I am going to do something to correct it. So for now, we're just going to work again on increasing the round by six. So we're on 18, we're taking that to 24. The last round we did one single crochet and then an increase. So this round, we're going to do two single crochet and then an increase. So into my first stitch, I just do one single crochet. Into my second stitch, I do one single crochet. And into the third, I do two. So I do my increase. Okay. okay. We're going to go again. So one single crochet, one single crochet, and then two single crochets into that stitch. So do that all the way around until you have 24 stitches, and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I'm on my last repeat of the pattern. So my 21st stitch. 22nd stitch and then an increase to finish so my 23rd and 24th into the same so by now you're you should definitely be seeing that hexagon begin to form it's quite a, quite a rounded hexagon it's not a discernible point but it is a hexagon not a circle and we would rather have a circle for the base of our conical flask so what we're going to do is we're actually going to offset our start point so if we were going for a hexagon our next round would be three single crochets followed by an increase until we worked up to 30 stitches. So we're currently on 24, we're working up to 30. But because that would make the hexagon even more hexagon shaped and form that shape and we want a circle, we're going to do one single crochet, then an increase, and then we're going to do three increase, three increase until we come back round. And that means we're going to be finishing with two single crochets and not an increase. So let me show you that. We go into the first stitch and we make one single crochet. At this point, I'm gonna introduce my stitch marker because I want to focus on getting the pattern right rather than counting the stitches. So I want a marker in place to show me where I started this round. I'm just gonna put that into that stitch that I've just worked. So once I hit the stitch before the stitch marker, I know that I've finished my round. We're then going to increase, so we're going to put two single crochets into the next stitch. Okay, oh, I've split my yarn. There we go. <laughs> we're now going to work our pattern, and we're not going to worry about this until we get to the end of the round. So our pattern is three single crochets followed by increase. So one, two, three, and work our increase by doing two into the same stitch. Repeat the pattern again. One, two, three. And then I'll increase by doing two into the same stitch. So pause the video and continue your round and I'll meet you back to show you how to finish the round.
Okay, so I've just done my last three single crochets. I have my last increase to do, so that's two stitches into the same. And then you'll notice that up to your stitch marker, there are two more stitches left, which is what we expected because before we did our first increase, we only crocheted one instead of three. So by closing up these remaining two with a single crochet in each stitch, we've actually offset the pattern and the whole way round, there are three single crochets and an increase. So that's how you would do your ooh, uh, fifth round. We're already on our fifth round, excellent. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. So you can count your rounds. Once you get to the end, you can see where your magic circle and in initial stitches were. And then each ridge after that is a round. So that's the first one, the magic circle, the second, the third, the fourth, and then we're on the fifth. We just finished the fifth. I think that I probably want my conical fast to be a little bit bigger than this, so I'm going to go for another round, maybe two, we'll see. Um, but the next round, now that we've actually offset the fifth round, the hexagon's no longer there which means that we can make life easy on ourselves and just go back to working the round from the start. The next round is gonna be four single crochets followed by an increase. I'm still gonna use the stitch marker though just so I don't lose my place. So I'm gonna work into that first stitch, pop my stitch marker back. So that was my first single crochet, my second, my third, and my fourth. Then I do my increase, so two single crochets into the next stitch and repeat that pattern. So one single, two single, three single, four, followed by an increase, so two into the same stitch. And then we're going to repeat the pattern all the way around. So feel free to pause the video and I'll meet you back at the end of the round. Okay, so I just finished my roundup doing four single crochets followed by an increase. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the size of the circle at this point. If you want to make your conical flask bigger, then you would just keep increasing. Um, so you would do uh, each row, you do five single crochets, then an increase. The next row you would do six single crochets and an increase and you might want to offset those so that you don't get that hexagon pattern forming again but you would just keep doing that pattern until you got a circle that was big enough the same as if you wanted to make a circle coaster for a cup of tea or coffee you would want to make this bigger so you would just keep going so five single increase six single increase seven single increase eight single increase until it was as big as you wanted it to be the main thing to remember is just that you will want to offset it. You can offset it by different amounts each time. So we offset the last one just by one single stitch and then the increase and closed it with two uh, singles at the end. But as you get more and more, you might want to actually offset it by about half. So if you were doing the next round of five single crochets and then an increase, you might want to actually offset it by two single crochets instead of by one single crochet and so on and so on. Hopefully that makes sense. There should be videos out there that explain how to make circles and other shapes with crochet. But for now, I'm going to stick with this size. I'm just gonna pause the video a moment while I darn the end in because I don't want that to be still loose whilst I am beginning to shape the rest of the flask. Uh, if you still have your end, now might be a good time to weave it in, simply because you're not working with a 3D shape at the moment. So I'll pause the video and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've darned most of my tail in, but I do, do have quite a long tail because I was trying to show you how to do the loop rather than contorting my uh, hand in order to make the tail as short as possible. Um, you do need enough of a tail to actually weave it in to secure it, but you don't want loads of spare yarn so you have to cut loads away. Um, but we're going to continue with the flask. Now, we want a crisp edge because this is going to be the base of our flask and then we're going to work up into a cone shape. But the circle that we have here is the basis of many Aragorumi things. So you could turn this into a sphere to make a character's head, for example. Um, and to do that, you would start working in something called straight rows. So straight rows are where you would work a stitch into every... Uh, 
stitch from the previous round, you wouldn't do any increases or decreases. So if you're going to make a sphere, you would maybe do a couple of straight rows, another increase, lots more straights, uh, until you had sort of a circular, uh, not circular, a spherical shape. However, we don't want a spherical shape, we want our cone. So we're going to be working into the back loops only. Um, but we're also not going to do a straight row because if we do a straight row, we don't have as crisp an edge to the base of our flask as we want. So we're actually going to decrease whilst we do this. So I'll go slowly to show you. We won't worry about the decreases first. Let's just get established with the back loops. When you go through your stitch, you usually go underneath the full V of the stitch. We don't want to do that. We want to go through just the part of that V that is furthest away from us, the back loop. And we're going to go through it, pull apart the loop and complete our single crochet as usual. That leaves this front loop here on display. So you can see both the loops of the next stitch, the stitch we've just done in the back loop and then the front loop is left. So we're going to have this really nice crisp edging of front loops when we've finished. You can normally tell where your round began based on where the front loop is, but just to make sure that we don't have to worry about it, I'm going to stick this stitch marker back into place. So we have got how many stitches? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. Okay, so we've got 36 stitches from our last round, we want to go down by six down to 30. So we're going to do four single crochets and then a decrease, I think. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's what we want to do. Four single crochets and then a decrease. Uh, so we just done our first one. So into the back loop of the next stitch, is our second single crochet into the back loop of the third stitch a single crochet into the back loop of the fourth stitch a single crochet so now we're going to have to decrease now if you were decreasing normally you would be able to use the front stitches to do your decrease that becomes a bit harder when you're just using the back stitches only so we're going to do a different type of decrease than what is usually shown in tutorials um, we're essentially going to single crochet two together using the back loops only. So we're going to go through the back loop of the next stitch and pull up a loop. Rather than completing the stitch, we're then going to go through the back loop of the next stitch and pull up another loop. So we now have three loops on our hook. Then we're going to pull up a yarn over and go through all three stitches. That has the effect of decreasing whilst also staying in the back loops only. So let's do our next pattern repeat. Through the back loop doing just four single crochets. That's our third. And then that's our fourth. And then we're going to do that decrease again. Okay. So we're going to go into the back loop of the next stitch and pull up a loop. How well can you see this best? Probably that way. Into the back loop of the second stitch and pull up a loop. So we have three on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. So that's going to have the effect of giving us a crisp edge whilst also beginning the shape of the cone. So we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, doing four single crochets and then that special decrease. And I'll meet you back at the end of the round. Okay. So I've worked to my final decrease. I'm just going to attempt to show this a little bit closer to the camera. I have two stitches left. I'm going to work into the back loop of the first, pull up a loop. I'm going to work into the back loop of the second, pull up a loop. So there's, there's my front stitches and then the ones I pulled up. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. So hopefully, I don't know how the angle was on that, but hopefully you was able to see that a little bit clearer. So it might feel a little bit weirdly shaped at the moment, but once we start making the rest of the cone, it should form into the right shape that we're after, into that cone. 
the uh, front posts, as you can see, make this really clear, crisp base for our flask. So we're just going to keep going. So I think we're going to do a straight row because we don't want to actually make our cone too steep. So we'll do a straight row now. Um, we've got 30 stitches. I'm just gonna take my stitch marker out to do the first of those stitches. So we're gonna go through both loops again. So we're gonna go through the stitch properly, pull up that first stitch, put my marker back in. And remember our straight rows are just simply putting one stitch from our new round into the old round. In each case, no increases, no decreases, just a stitch in every place all the way round. Okay, so just got two more stitches to do to finish my round. Okay, and that is sitting a little bit nicer now that we've started working that. Next, we're going to do another decrease row, but this is going to be a little bit simpler because we are not having to work into the back. So we have 30 stitches, we're going to have to decrease um, down to 24, so we're going to do three single crochets. I'm going to mark my row again, just so I don't have to worry about it. So one, two, three, and these are just single crochets into the stitch as usual. Now, it's up to you, you can crochet two together if you would like, there's no reason for you not to uh, do a two, cro uh, two crochets uh, together using the full stitch, that's a perfectly valid way to decrease, but I do prefer um, decreasing using the front loops whenever I can. So I'm just going to go through the front loop, so this is a usual decrease, I go through the front loop of the first stitch, and then I go straight through the front loop of the second stitch. Then I yarn over, pull through both those front loops and then complete my stitch. When you go to do your next single crochet, just make sure that you do in fact go into the next stitch and not back into the second stitch that you decreased. Um, it's easy to do because of how the stitches lay and the fact that when you go through the front loop, you actually leave the back loop exposed in such a way that you look like you still have a stitch um, so just be careful you can always count them if you need to so I'm going to go one two three more single crochets and then another decrease back through front loop front loop yarn over pull through both yarn over and complete the stitch so meet me back at the end of the round so I'm just doing my third single crochet and then I've got two more stitches left to go through the front loops of both, yarn over and pull through and do my decrease stitch. Okay, so the next row that we're going to do, the next round that we're going to do is going to be another straight row because again we don't want this flask to be uh, decreasing too sharply, we want to still have some body to the conical flask. So we're going to do a straight row, just take my stitch marker out while I do the first stitch. And then just a single crochet in each stitch all the way around, I'll meet you back at the end of the row. Okay, so we're at the end of our next straight row. So we're at the point where we're going to need to decrease again. Now, depending on how much liquid you want in your flask will depend on when you want to change colour. If you wanted to only have a little bit of water at the bottom of your flask, you might want to change to your white colour now. I'm going to give it another couple of rows before I change to my white. Um, so I'll show you how to change colour then. For now, we're just going to do another decrease row. We're down to two single crochets followed by a decrease. So I'm going to do my first single crochet, put my stitch marker back in, like so, and do my second single crochet, and then do a decrease by going through the front loops of the next two, pulling up a loop and then completing the stitch. So two single crochets, 
and then going through the front loop of the next two stitches, yarning over, pulling up a loop and going to complete the stitch. So I'm going to continue the rest of the round doing two single crochet and then a decrease and I'll meet you at the end of the round for the next row. Okay, and then my last pattern repeat, one single crochet, two single crochet and another decrease by going through the front loops of the next two stitches, pulling up a loop and then completing the stitch. My yarn is annoying me so I'm going to pull some loose. Um, okay, so we're going to do a, another straight row again. Um, I feel like I could probably have gotten away with doing a few more straight rows because I still feel like this flask is a little bit steep but that doesn't matter too much it's fine um, so we'll do a straight row of the glue yarn again so moving my stitch marker doing that first stitch popping my stitch marker back oh actually that's not very tight just redo that stitch because it was a little bit loose and you don't want them to be loose because you don't want the stuffing to be coming out of the stitches um there we go so a straight row once again is just a single crochet into every stitch so i'll meet you back at the end of the round okay so we've just finished up our straight row i think that i'm going to turn to the white yarn now um so just in case you wanted to change the slope of your flask what we've been doing is we've been doing um the first row have to be a decrease so we've got that sharp edge but then we've been doing an ink um not an increase row a straight row and then a decrease a straight row then a decrease a straight row then a decrease all the way up this flask and that has produced this level of a slope i think that if you wanted a steeper slope so one where it came in faster it wouldn't look very flask like but if you did want it to be like that then you would put more increase um, ah more decrease rows into your work so instead of doing a decrease straight decrease straight you would probably do decrease straight decrease decrease straight decrease straight decrease decrease straight so that would make a steeper slope if you wanted a shallower slope so one that actually came uh, up to a point in uh, a, a bit more height then and I think that if I did this again, I would go for a shallower slope, then you would increase the number of straight rows that you're doing. So you would do a decrease, a straight, maybe another straight and then a decrease. And a straight, decrease, straight, straight, something like that. Just throwing in the occasional extra straight row rather than doing a decrease, straight, decrease, straight, decrease, straight. Um, but I'm gonna just keep going with my decrease straight pattern, but that's how you can edit it. Um, and I'm gonna change color. I have 18 stitches at the moment. Um, I'm actually going to remove my stitch marker because we can probably count the stitches from now on. And I'm actually going to undo part of my last stitch. So I'm gonna pull that out of the way, take my hook out, and I'm going to go into the last stitch and then that's unwrapped, that's frogged back the last stitch. I'm going to redo part of it. I'm going to go into the stitch and pull the yarn up. So I've got two on my loop, but instead of finishing the stitch in the blue, I'm going to finish the stitch in the white. So I'm going to leave an end. I'm going to yarn over with the white and pull it through both those blue ones. And then you need to get the tail of the white and what will be the end of the blue and pull them quite tight to secure it. So that is actually just the end of my last round but I now have a white stitch that will then go on the top of the next, which will be the start of the next round. So we're gonna go into this one, pull up a loop and secure it. And I've worked over the ends to weave them in place so I don't have to darn it later. Now this is going to be a, or this, this could be a decrease row, but actually I think what I'm gonna do just to make life easier is make this a straight row and then decrease on the next one so that I don't have to worry about weaving the ends in during a decrease stitch. So I'm just gonna do a straight row all the way around in the white. 
Um, this is also the point where if you wanted to add any aragurumi faces to your conical flask that you would do so. Um, I actually did want to but I don't think I've got any uh, safety eyes that are small enough and I really don't want to sew the features on <laughs> this small a toy. So I'm just single crocheting a straight row, uh, making sure that I go over the yarn ends to save myself a job later and by the time you've gone around about half of the work those yarn ends are perfectly secure I'm going to keep going for just a little bit longer but as long as you've done a few stitches worth uh, the yarn will be in place it's usually more secure to work the yarn in different directions which is why going it around half will automatically do that um, but you can also just go around the whole round for example and that's going to hold it in place. I've now took them out of the way and I'm going just into the straight rows and I will deal with cutting those in a moment. Um, she says accidentally picking up the tail end of the blue, we don't want that. So that's my last stitch because we started with a white top. So that's my straight round finished. Um, so I'm just going to go find some scissors so I can cut that blue end off and then I'll join you back here for the decrease round next. Okay, so I've snipped the blue yarn off so it's no longer in the way. And we're going to do a decrease row next. So we have 18 stitches, which means we're going to do one single crochet and then a decrease. So one single crochet and then a decrease. So going through the front loops, pulling the yarn through, and finishing the stitch. And we're going to do that until we have 12 stitches left instead of 18. So one more single crochet and then a decrease. And we can check this as well again. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Perfect. So one thing to note is that I have just done this whole pattern in the round. So you can see the join there. You can see the join here um, if you're going to put facial features on then you can put them on this side where it's out of the way the other thing that you could do is when you're actually at a join you could switch to doing a row where you actually chain one up and you slip stitch into the final stitch rather than working in the round and that will mean that at this point here you would have a smooth transition and the same here i'm not too worried about that though because i'm gonna just keep my features for my aragorumi on the front so we're down to 12, uh, we're going to do another straight row, so I'm just going to count these out, so single crochet 12 times, that's the first one, the second one, so you just join me at the end of that row. Okay, so now we've done our straight row in 12 stitches, we're going to keep doing a few straight rows in 12 stitches to actually start shaping the opening of the flask. So I'm going to go for three more rows. Uh, and then I'll join you back um, and we'll see whether we think that's long enough or whether we need to keep going. Okay, so that's what three more straight rows um, of 12 look like. Uh, I think I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to do a slightly different row. So uh, if you like that height, great. You can just wait for me to catch up. Uh, if you want to go uh, higher, then go ahead and just pause and join me when you're ready to start closing off. But you're going to need a row or two before you get to that height. So don't actually go on to get this to the perfect height for you. Um, stop a couple of rows short of that because I'm going to show you how to close it off. Um, so I'm going to do one more row and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I've done one more row, definitely prefer that, I'm happy with that. So we're going to begin closing off. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is add some toy stuffing. Um, so I'm just going to, whilst I do this, pull my last loop a bit wider and stick my stitch marker in just so that I don't have to worry about the hook dangling everywhere. Stuffing! Uh, this can be any toy safe stuffing that you want. We have a limited amount of brands in the UK that we can go for um, but it needs to be sort of one that you know is safe and uh, is washable so you're just gonna shove it through <laughs> that whole 
that we still have left open and I actually think that I'm not going to need this second lump there because that's quite enough I think try and shape it into that cone as well uh, typically the stuffing will go for a spherical kind of mold when you shove it into your toy so just kind of squish it in to the sort of shape that you want I think that is just enough so I'm going to put that spare back in the bag sorry for the rustling I am really happy with how that is coming along um, so <laughs> in case I haven't said it already I am pretty much making this up as I go along and if I make a mistake I'm just cutting it out frogging back and redoing what I've learned from the mistake um, so you know with the exception of the steepness of this flask um, I have frogged back something like the join for example um, all sorts of things that I would correct but that's fine uh, I think the final product here is at least a good enough base for you to work off and potentially edit your own patterns um, so I'm going to take my stitch marker out and I'm going to put my hook back in now that I've got my stuffing in place oh, I'm going to try and put my hook back in now that I've got my stuffing in place so I've seen a few people who then don't actually close off that stuffing which means that when you want to wash it you're not going to be able to because that stuff is going to come out so what we're going to do is we're actually going to close this off by working the front and the back loops in two different ways so the first thing we're going to do is close off using the back loops we're going to decrease that 12 into a 6 by going into the back loops only so this is where we're going to have to use that special decrease again where we go through the back loop, pull up a loop, go through the next back loop, pull up a loop, and then pull a yarn over through all three. So that's our first decrease. Then we're going to do it again. One, two, and then pull through all three loops. This is quite difficult for me because it's quite a splitty yarn. So I've got one more to do. Pull through through and then through all three there okay and then what I'm going to actually do is try and sneak a little tiny bit more stuffing just into that teeny tiny hole so I'm going to just pause the video while I do this because this will be tricky okay there we go so I've just added a tiny bit more stuffing through the teeny tiny hole left by these three stitches um and the end of your crochet hook is usually pretty good for that, it's usually about the right size. And we're going to close this hole off now. So I'm going to, you can do this any way you want. I'm going to slip stitch into the first of those, cut the yarn and just sew it in place. So uh, I'm gonna slip stitch into there, do the chain, and then cut a piece of my yarn, not the best scissors. To hand for that but I don't know where all my other ones have disappeared to um, I'm going to get my darning needle and I'm going to go through uh, opposites so the what is now the second stitch will go through the fourth the fifth will go through the third uh, something like that so I'm just going across and that's going to make like a little bit of a net so that's going to close off that hole that we just snuck that extra little piece of stuffing through and I'm just going to do that one more time just through what was the front loops um, if my yarn doesn't get into a tangle just so it's got that little extra net in place it's not going to matter how neat this is because no one's going to see it and we're going to show you why that's the case in just a moment so once that's stitched into place we can um, just stick it down into the work somewhere and I've done definitely too much yarn here so I'll need to darn this slightly um, so I tend to go down into the work like this and then darn it in somewhere here where you really just can't tell that it is being woven around um, and that's going to secure it into place. No one's going to know the difference. Um, and just go, I'll just go through the work a few times when it's this small. Uh, when I've got a bigger sort of you know crochet head or something, 
I actually try to go under the stitches, under the legs of the stitches like this. That's a very secure way of doing it. Um, so I will do that once, just to hold it in place. And uh, yes, I'll just leave that at the back somewhere and darn it in later. Because <laughs> um, I want to get on and show you why we closed this off. I'm going to get our yarn and all these front loops that we left in place when we did our decrease in the back loops we are going to pull stitches up in so what i'm going to do is i found the join here so that's my first front loop that i believe so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that's my first one and that's my twelfth one i'm going to actually pull up my yarn through the eleventh it's just going to smooth over the join slightly so i'm going to pull up my yarn through the 11th front stitch and I'm going to chain one to get to the right height and then I'm going to go through the front stitch of my 12th pull up a stitch and do a single crochet go through the first front stitch pull up a loop do a single crochet and we're going to keep going doing single crochets. Now because we decreased in the back loops, we went from 12 down to six, but we left behind 12 front loops, which means we're going to pick this back up where we left off making the tube. So we're just going through all these single, uh, not single, all these front loops, doing single crochets all the way around until we have 12 okay nearly there and I'm going to double check as well just because I just because of how I started this just double check that I've got all 12 before I continue so two four six oh I've lost it <laughs> two four six eight ten there's my 12th and I'm just going to work straight into um, what was the first stitch. I'm not going to try and do this in rows, I'm going to do this in the round. So, and I can go into the full stitch now. I uh, just have to be careful because it's splitting. Oh, it's splitting really badly. Okay, we're in. <laughs> so that's my first stitch of the round and then going back into it. And I'm going to go around again with another straight row. So this will be 12 more stitches. So looking at this, you now can't see that we closed it up underneath. Um, I'm actually going to try and make a rim on this glass and see what it looks like. Uh, so I'm going to actually re uh, work a reverse row. So a reverse single crochet, it's sometimes called the craft stitch, I think. So this is where what we're actually going to do is we're going to put our hook into the previous stitch. Uh, first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip stitch this row. Okay. And then you might need to loosen that off a little bit, but I'm going to go into the previous stitch. Pull. It's a little bit tricky. There'll probably be better tutorials out there on how to do it. So we go into the stitch. We pull the yarn through the stitch, but not through the first loop that was on our hook. We're trying to pull the yarn to the left of that stitch. Uh, so this is, might actually end up not working because it's so splitty. Um, and then we're going to pull through both those. Oh, this is not working. Ah, got it. Okay. If you don't know how to do crab stitch, you can either watch a video at this point, because I'm sure that I'm not demonstrating it very well at all with my horrible splitty yarn, uh, or you could just finish with ordinary single crochet. That's absolutely fine too. I just thought I would try this and see what it looks like. Um, so now that I've got going, I wonder if I can show you a little bit better. So what we're basically doing is we're working the wrong way around the work. 
to the reverse single crochet and that adds this really nice corded twist so I split my yarn which is not a good start okay I've got my yarn back so what we do is we loosen that off a little bit stick the hook through the last stitch yarn over and this is where a lot of the twist comes in so it's a little bit difficult pull it through just the stitch and then sort of pull it underneath the one that was already on your hook because you want the stitch that you pull you want the loop that you pull through the stitch to be on the left of the loop that was originally on your hook then you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those um, and then you have this really nice corded pattern Boom. we are at the end I'm pr pretty sure that what I'm going to do is just um, essentially slip stitch this into place and then use a so what I'm deliberately doing now is trying to pull that loop rather than to the left of the one that was originally on the hook actually pull it through the one that was on the hook perfect um, and then just pull that through there and I will use the rest of the yarn to tidy up the join uh, and make it look like a seamless curve. So we can see now that there's the flask. Uh, that's the, about the height that I want. So I actually did four straight rows, uh, no, five straight rows of 12 in total before I did the back loop only. There's a little bit of a join where we did the front loop but, um, addition to then add the top of the flask but it does successfully hide the bit in the middle where we closed it off and it just means that when you wash this your stuffing's not going to come out I've obviously got a lot of ends to weave in I would have my face somewhere around here if I'd have added a face but yes if you are a scientific crocheter or someone crocheting for a scientific friend here is a conical flask um, and you can do any colour of liquid in the bottom there. Um, pro tip that reds and yellows are acids <laughs> and purples are alkalis um, using conventional um, colour indicators so <laughs> if you want to make it uh, specific and tailored then go ahead. Um, but yeah this is just a water in conical flask. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. I'm hopefully going to do some more tutorials uh, with some other shaped um, scientific equipment, Bunsen burners, uh, test tubes, things like that. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in or you know someone that would be interested in it, so you want to learn, then come back for those videos. So <laughs> there we have it, a conical flask. So I'm really happy with how this turned out, except I think I would want to make it a little bit bigger and to go for a bit more of a shallower slope in the flask in the future. Uh, we have this row of back loops only, which has allowed us to do a nice um, base for this flask so it will stand up properly. So oh <laughs> it helps if I'm not shaking of course <laughs> um, and then we've done our color change um, and we've also actually closed this off so it can go in the wash and the stuffing isn't going to fall out um, and also the last thing that I did was to add a reverse single crochet stitch to the rim to try and give it a little bit more texture you can ever so slightly see where we have closed it off but I don't think it's so bad uh, all things considered, it's certainly better than it falling apart in the washing machine. Um, so yeah, um, definitely enjoyed making this. I've obviously got some ends to weave in. Um, I might even undo the white so that I can frog it back and put some little facial features on my Aragurumi cam uh, conical flask. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe not, I don't know. This might just stay as my little template. Um, so yes, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that you learned something from that and I will see you in another episode.